What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube? This is the Nita Podcast, episode 43. 43 weeks of talking about Madden, and Madden is booming this week. Probably the main reason why we just got a patch, literally, I want to say eight hours ago, chat. Uh, YouTube, let me know what you guys think as far as the, the patch that just came out, man. It's really big news, um, so I'm glad I'm able to do a show today of all days. I'm glad to be able to pop this show down. So we're pretty much going to talk about the patch, and we're going to talk about the road to the classic, which happened this weekend. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, please hit that like button, man. If you're listening on SoundCloud, also, man, follow my SoundCloud. We'll release these every Wednesday as long as I do one. Um, excited to talk about the patch and see what happened exactly, uh, what everything I haven't played the game, um, was up making tons of videos, man. If you guys haven't checked out my new YouTube videos, have a game versus K Mac on there, have my two selections in my CFM fantasy draft that we are starting this week. So check those out also, man. D definitely streamed a lot last night and yesterday too. So I have not played the game yet. I mean myself, I have not played it. Um, I have talked with all my friends that have played it. I have read the patch notes, everything. So I'm going to need you guys' help as far as what you like about it and what you don't like about it. So that's where we're going to go with this. But what I'll start with is pretty much uh, there was a lot of Madden games this weekend. I felt like this Road to the Classic by Mutthead, who put on this event where if you win, or the final, four, the final two, I believe, get uh, travel and their hotel and stuff paid for to the Classic. So that's a really good opportunity, man, because I know... Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get up and fly to an event on like a month's notice to go to another state, especially if you live far away and then get a hotel, all this, especially, I mean, some of these kids are young, so it's definitely, uh, a different task. So Mudhead is giving them a thou a chance to go ahead and do that, man. Um, and for me, it was really good. I did watch it. I mean, Saturday, there wasn't much to watch as Clef to God. Needed gaming very own, pretty much dominated everybody. If you guys watched him, he pretty much ran through the competition. Um, did not run the ball. There was no arm ball bar involved. He did not use the Cowboys. I'm glad that Clef got off of the Saints. He used the Saints in the uh, Mudhead or the kickoff tournament, whatever it was. And I, I think the Saints suck. Um, I, I think if you're using the Saints, you're, you're thinking too hard. You really are. Um, there's two abilities in the game that are pretty tough. Obviously, the arm bar with Zeke um, and the escape artist. And the Saints have neither of them. So, I think that was an L by Clef going into the, that tournament. And he learned from that and said, you know what? My offense is high-powered. I don't need a route chem. Uh, so, let me go ahead and try Deshaun Watson. And it turned out, like, he dominated. Like, literally, I, I, want, I was trying to bring up some gameplay to break down some gameplay of Clef's games. But... There was no close games. It was pretty much all blowouts. So for me, there was really nothing to watch in that situation. Or in those gameplays, there was nothing to watch. So we're not going to talk about the PlayStation 4 side. Clef dominated that. Uh, the next day was Sunday. Was the Xbox side. Um, and it came down to VY, Electrify, and Ghost Madden. Um, Ghost, I, I will tell you, man. Ghost is not... He's not a a bunch guy. You know, when Bunch is the best offense, he ran it. You know, but he always kind of been... Ghost has always been somebody that kind of finds what's good. And then he's going to adapt his game around that, really. He's never been one... Like, Skimble's a guy that's pretty much going to be in Bunch. And he's going to make Bunch work no matter what. And then Kiv, Kiv, is kinda, Kiv has been around a diff, bunch of different little offenses. But I feel he's a Bunch guy, too. You know? And, um... I, I think goes from Madden 17 with the uh, doubles week. And then, obviously, a lot of his bunch stuff was tough. Um, but I, I think Ghost is somebody that's going to find something that's going to work. And he's going to kind of adapt that to his game. Now, I want to bring you guys to his game versus VY. What well, we could talk about it. Honestly, this games like these are obnoxiously boring for me. Um, a lot of running. But with a lot of running, definitely comes a lot of decision-making. You know, and as much as, as much as, you know, the run sucks, I, I don't like the run, as you guys know, if you're familiar here. I don't like the run that much, so, but we're going to talk about it, and you guys can help me going, breaking down this. This was Ghost vs. VY Electrify. Now, I want to go back to this kickoff. 
Now this kickoff, you guys, obviously, it looks like it looks it looks very very. This kick return one is from the back of the end zone. Now this looks very pedestrian, like it isn't a big deal, like it's not gonna it's not gonna mean that much. It's not gonna come into play. But if you take it out from the back of the end zone, you better get back to the twenty five, you know. And for that, if he runs out here, let's just get up here and get to the twenty five. Run sideways, and he gets the ball to the fifteen yard, fourteen yard line. So if you're gonna take it out from the back of the end zone and only get to the fourteen yard line, that's a loss of eleven yards already. So you're starting your offensive drive, the first offensive drive of the championship game. You're starting from the fourteen yard line instead of the twenty five. You know, so to me, honestly, uh, to me that's a tough decision to take that out. And if you want, it's kind of like a real life decision where. If you're going to take the ball out of the end zone, you better get to the 25. And he doesn't. So we're going to start from the 25. Um, or from the 14. First run gets bagged. Okay, so we get a second and 11 for VY Electrify. This is, uh, so then we get second and 11. You see, Ghost, this is pretty much the nation's run defense. I'm the per uh, Joke was the person that really put me on this run defense. And there we go. We got a negative yards and we no huddle. He likes what he sees. I, and, and, and maybe a no huddle is not bad as I pause it. Maybe he likes this plant passing against this defense. As you see, he gets sacked right there. Contains really glitched him. Maybe you, maybe you do that. You no huddle. I, I've always told you guys I'm not a fan of no huddle because it speeds you up. This doesn't really speed your opponent up, but here we go with the no huddle. Ghost is sending everybody. He has the drag and just gets sacked. So I feel like when you no huddle, you don't have your best play out there. You don't, I mean, your mind is moving fast. I mean, obviously the defender's mind might be moving fast, but your mind is moving fast. Uh, so that definitely was a big play. Then you kick the safety. Uh, the safety point out of bounds isn't the worst because I feel like, I feel like you can automatically return that to the 50-yard line. So definitely... A terrible star for VY, you know, somebody that, I mean, this game is going to fit him the way he plays. He's always been a runner, always been a two tight end type of guy, always been a, always been a guy to where if the run is good, he's going to be a tough out because he knows how to pass out of those running formations. So you see him go start here. And that's what I mean about goals, man. He's not, he's not going to just run bunch no matter what, you know, if there's something good in the game, goals is going to find what's good in the game. And he's, he's really going to do his best to use that into his game. And that's what he's doing right now with this I form big. And one thing about a running game, man, if you're both going to be runners, the game is going to go pretty fast. As we see just swarming, you got to swarm to tackle Ezekiel Elliott as he broke two tackles on that run. And definitely, dude, two tackles and only get one yard is a win for the defense. We see once again, we see 3-4, spread the linebackers, pinch the line, blitz those inside backers, really comes into play. And this is what you got to see. Now, the difference between Ghost and VY early is Ghost is going to go into a passing set, whereas VY just no huddled his running set. So you already see a difference in who's more comfortable, who's more relaxed. And I think being relaxed is something that's underrated as a Madden player, really. Uh, being relaxed and being comfortable is two of the most important things, no matter what game you're playing. I mean, to be relaxed, if you're relaxed, you're thinking straight. And you're able to, to make plays, you know, with your full thinking, using your whole mind. You know, as we see Ghost come out here, just a drag. Just hits a drag right here, over here to my man Gallup. Just to get into field goal range. Uh, Mutt, that's not a field goal right now. So, I know a lot of guys are playing Mutt. But, you know, Regs, these kickers, uh, I believe, I don't know who the kicker is for the Cowboys anymore. My, Mayor, my Meyer. But he eats, makes that 40, 57 yarder pretty easily. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's what you got. So goals, kick, getting the ball to half is already up five nothing. You know that that's that's pretty much where he's at, and that that feels good. Once again, we see Vy taking the ball out with Tavon Austin getting stopped over here at the 10 yard line. So, uh, and I joke about it, man. You guys hear me joke about it all three phases, but all three phases matter. And three phases right now, VY is terrible on special teams right now. I, nice little, nice little wrinkle from Ghost there. If you guys didn't see it, he's running the cover four like I talked about, but rather than using his safety, he went over that play user the corner. Interesting play by him, and he's going to do it again here. 
Just bring an extra person in the box, and he's just dominating the run right now. By using that corner, that weak side corner, the corner that normally does nothing, it adds another person to the box. So that's really a great adjustment. Now we'll see. Vy did not know huddle his pass, his running set. Um. So for me, I mean, Ghost Vy, I believe has four carries right now for negative like five yards. You know, so that's definitely a big deal if you can stop the run like that. And you see, hey man, my man Vy is in a great offense right here. Playing against a little nickel normal. Going to get a cool double team over there on Demarcus Lawrence. I lied. He did not get double teamed. Great pocket presence by VY. Running one of the best plays in the game, man. If you guys are interested in that New Orleans Saints ebook, it is dropping tonight. So make sure you guys stay tuned, man. You guys can get a hold of that and learn that New Orleans ebook. That VY just used the dot ghost. Now, for me, if I'm VY, this is why dub.w is not a runner. You know, I run four times for negative five yards. And I pass one time for 20 yards. So wh why do I go back to the run like this? As we see Ghost again with that corner. Maybe that's why. You may and Runners have the philosophy that if they stay with it, if they stay at it, you know, then eventually they'll bust one. And for me, that's kind of how I feel about passing. I feel like it's easier to bust a big pass than it is to bust a big run. At least for me, as we see, Ghost's run defense is really good. I like this. I like this adjustment of being on an outside corner. A lot of times the outside corners in cover four are useless almost. And for Ghost to be using one, it really makes it a little bit better. Makes it a little more high power for sure. And that was in our first quarter. You know, we see a lot of running. I've seen two completed passes and one safety. As we see a little tight, tight offset here from VY. Ghost blows it up, but Ezekiel Elliott just punches him in the face and almost breaks one. Van Der Esch with that high motor chasing him down from behind, man. So pretty obvious inside zone right there from VY. And uh, Ghost blew it up, but that's one thing about having that guy Westry. Westry is 6'3", I believe, with like 94 speed. He's a monster user, but he's not going to take down Zeke ever, pretty much. So for me, it's tough to have him as the person that needs to tackle somebody. But that's where Ghost had him, and you know, that's going to happen. D, what's up, man? How you making out? I'm talking to the chat right now, man. If you guys have not, don't follow me on Twitch. Make sure you do that to check out these podcasts live. Little adjustment right there from Ghost. Went to a two-man under, and I, oh, my God. Zeke is just punching everybody on the field. Went to two-man under, man aligned right there. Got away from uh, that cover four that he was using and give up his biggest run of the day, honestly. Mm, so now he's back in that cover four. Van Der Esch just dominating, getting punched in the face. You got to hit him when you get a chance. I will tell you guys, man, hitting him low is probably the best way to tackle him, but you're never going to get a fumble. When you see Zeke or you see Le'Veon Bell or you see Ty Gurley break one of these break one of these things, stiff arm one of your linebackers, you got to punch him in the face. That's the only way to get fumbles. Uh, I, I know you might bounce off. I know you might get stiff arm, but you have to take that chance, punch him in the face, and just hope for a fumble, honestly, because that's the only – thing we can do to combat the stiff arm right now is fumbles and for me that's why i didn't watch fumbles patch too much and we'll talk about that later in the podcast is patching fumbles did you guys want fumbles patch but for me if my, if a running back's doing this much to my linebackers my d-line and my secondary i'm kind of cool with them fumbling every once in a while as we see ghosts out here and just a little two man under yeah the cowboys got better in the patch as we see the Marcus Lawrence, great pocket right there by Dak. Can he get the first down? Ooh, VY, I think you got to let your nuts hang right there. Ooh, he actually got the first down with Zach, that, or with Dak Prescott, Zach Prescott, whatever. Uh, for him, the uh, just a mo mobile quarterback there with the Cowboys is really tough. Now we'll see it again. We'll see Ghost out here with the, the – I feel like Ghost, the way he's playing run defense, I would probably run this to the right every time. Yeah, and there it is. But just a great job by Lawrence, by Jalen Smith, and by the safety just filling those holes. Uh, Ghost's run defense has been really good when he's been in this cover four. Yeah. Yeah, I think fumbles, I, if, if running back's doing this much to fumble, I mean, I definitely, or doing this much to my defense, I definitely wouldn't mind him fumbling every once in a while. Now, this is a run that I actually have in the New Orleans ebook that's coming out tonight. Um, and you see Ghost is dominating. Even Zeke is breaking so many tackles. 
Outside of that one run when Ghost went to uh, two men under, he's he's actually played the run as good as anybody else in this tournament that I, I have seen this year, honestly. You know, that's, that's definitely a dominant. And now we see Ghost in the patented dub dot W covered three cloud. And we see a inside zone there by VY. And I'll tell you who made that play, really, because this could have popped. But who made this play was Jalen Smith, man, because he just dish raised the left guard and doesn't allow. If you see, there's a seam to the left here if he gets a good block. But he made, made him kick it to the right and just blow up the play. Jalen Smith, who the Cowboys just signed. Interesting. We'll talk a little sports here, too. Interesting that the Cowboys signed Jalen Smith, man. Does that mean they have money for Dak? Dak wants $40 million a year. And Ezekiel Elliott wants to get paid, but they just paid a linebacker 65. Now, you can call me crazy, but to me, Jalen Smith is way more important than Ezekiel Elliott. I think Ezekiel Elliott is an absolute stud. I think, I, for me, he's the best running back in the league. Um, just his ability, just to it's not even about breaking tackles. The biggest thing that Zeke does for me is he turns a negative play into a two-yard gain, or he turns a no-yard gain into a three-yard gain. He just does not go down easily. Uh, but but he's also a running back. Running back is very replaceable. But I also feel like man, he makes their offense special, really. And but he is replaceable. And Jalen Smith is really a monster. So I think as much as the Eagles, uh, if you guys watch the Eagles, the Eagles really pay the right positions. I think the Cowboys made the right move in, in getting Jalen Smith signed and honestly putting him ahead of, of Ezekiel Elliott. It's tough as a fan because you see like the running back is the one that gets all the pub, gets all the publicity, and he's the star of the team. But at the same time, man, he's not the most important player, honestly. As we see Ghost just inside zone. And the interesting is VY calls a timeout right here. If you're Ghost, you want to run this clock down. because So if you don't get this, VY doesn't have that much time. And VY, thinking that, man, if I don't call a timeout, Ghost is probably not going to get any points before half. And VY is not a high-powered guy. So he goes with a little max protect. Throw the dot. Possession. Oh, he rat caught it. Oh, man. Great little setup there by Ghost. I mean, basic, max protect, uh, flat route, slant, and a post coming back across the middle, man. So if you guys are playing Ghost in the Man Classic, man, that could be one of his go-to plays that he goes to. Once again, just another run from Ezekiel Elliott. Ghost using his timeout, 42 seconds. Let's see if he can get, let's see if he can go ahead and get into the end zone. I, I don't think bunch tight end is good. You know, so for me, let's see what he goes through. This looks like a little PA post. Patton and Ghost coming out here in the bunch, drinking the punch, flipping the bunch. Old school Ghost right here, chat. I like it. I do like it. Does he like that in route on PA post is my question. Oh, he gets screamed at right there. Tackle in the backfield with the runoff. That'll pretty much do the half. Randy Gregory. Not the player Demarcus Lawrence is obviously in the game, but he does have um, some speed. So if he does get free like that, you're not getting away from him. And we'll see Ghost going here with a corner route play. Going to get sacked again. Vy, I would call timeout now, make him punt the ball. Hopefully he doesn't punt it in out of bounds. Hopefully I can return it. So good job by Vy holding the door, getting some sheds. Five to three at halftime. Not your typical MCS game. Clef, if you guys watch, Clef is high powered. Scoring probably 35, 40 points a game against people. Really dominating. This is more of your tournament style. Grounded out. Just really Cowboys versus Cowboys. And this is what we're going to get used to seeing. We're going to get used to seeing in a, in the Man Classic, man. I think this is going to be a lot of Cowboys versus Cowboys. I would assume that, uh, shoot, I would probably go as far as to say 90% of people would probably use the Cowboys in Arlington at the Madden Classic, you know, because uh, on top of that, with these new offensive line patches that they've made, improving the offensive line that we will talk about later in the show, that man, they are that just that much better now. You know, they, they're going to improve the Cowboys, not really improve any other teams, not really, not really change armbar a lot. You know, so I I think it's pretty much going to be the same game, but with. Uh, less with the Cowboys offensive line being that much better. Oh, that's just how that's just how I feel. As we see again, Ghost is getting the ball, VY in a very similar run defense. Motion over stretch. 
getting some good sheds right there. Uh, 98. I, I, Crawford, I believe, is 98. Those fat guys, man. You got you fat guys to fight every once in a while. Chiefs are usable. I, I see the Chiefs are tough. Yeah, I think the new double team feature. And we'll try it after the stream. Look at the D tackle backing up. What three four is this set where the D tackle backs up like that? Is that glitchy chat for run D? That might be tough. It looked like he was about to come right through the right through the A gap. Is we gonna go with it for that look again? Did he like that look? Now nah, this looks like just a little three four odds. Same thing, Jalen Smith. That's the one thing that makes me. I mean, I love honestly, I, and you guys are gonna be crazy. I love the arm bar. Interesting to see what Ghost does here. Fourth and six. I love the arm bar when Zeke is throwing around DBs. I think Zeke should absolutely dominate DBs. And we talked about that with Sirius Mo on one of the earlier podcasts this year. That man. It's tough to beat a, a DB in the open field one on one, and I agreed that man Zeke really should punch some of these DBs in the face, as we see Vy with another shitty return, and it's cool when he punches the DBs in the face, and I think we can all agree that every once in a while, man Zeke, uh, pretty much every time Zeke should get by a DB, unless we're talking Harrison Smith or Earl Thomas or Malcolm Jenkins or some of these great safeties, Derwin James that can tackle. I think Zeke should punch these guys in the face. But the, the the part that's disappointing is just seeing him punch linebackers in the face so easy, you know. So for me, that's definitely a tough tough thing to see. See him punch linebackers and D linemen. Uh, if he juked linebackers and D linemen, it'd be a little bit easier. As we see, ooh, Vy busting one up the middle there. That was one of his better runs of the day. Fourteen for forty nine yards. That's t- that's not a bad day at the office for Ghost's run defense. Outside of that, that was probably his second best run. But if you're a runner, man, you're just going to stay with it and stay true to it. And you see, that's what VY is doing right now. Punch him in the face. Pick up a cool 14 yards. Definitely getting the horses going. Getting that run block and the start start blocking, really. Yeah, I think, I think the arm bar punching fat guys or people over 250 pounds is a little little much. As you see, he just threw a D lineman out of the way. Literally just punched the D lineman in the face to the sideline. And, you know, a fat guy just literally just dish right. You know, I think the arm bar animation should be reserved for the DBs and the, maybe a linebacker once in a while, but not Jalen Smith or Van Der Esch. Uh, VY is definitely getting it going now. Just throwing people. Van Der Esch. Van Der Esch might be the number one player that gets stiff armed. Honestly, for me, if I add to all these games I watch, Van Der Esch is pretty much on the <laughs> on the ground. You know, so we see him get given uh, Ezekiel Elliott a little bit of a breather, which is always a pretty heads up play. I like when players do that. You know, give their star. You gave Ezekiel Elliott the ball six times in a row, man. Time to put him on the bench, let him catch his breath a little bit, even though he's blinking, man. You know, the more they blink, and we see Zeke back in the game. Mm. Back through the middle, picking up a cool eight yards right there. Third and two. Be interesting to see Ghost's defense because this is a huge play to stop him right here, to hold him to three. But I fully expect just another run as we see every linebacker blitzing. Take it to the fourth quarter. It is five to three going into the fourth quarter. This is not exactly your uh, barn burner. It is a <laughs> drag them. Knock them, slug them out game between VY and Ghost. Uh, hopefully, you guys watch this live over at Mudhead TV on Twitch as we see another Saints run over the middle, picking that up with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, this run is my favorite run in the game for me personally. It is in my Saints ebook, and you guys think I'm crazy, but I do have a run in the ebook. Show you guys how I run this play a lot differently than VY uh, as we see Van Der Esch just getting in the backfield. Making the play that time did not get stiff armed. Even if we got stiff armed, we had a, D, a DB waiting there. Uh, and if you're a VY man, I'm taking some of this clock with me. And he he leaves 21 seconds on the clock right there. You know because if I can get a touchdown, man, I really, really, really like my chances of holding Ghost out of the end zone. Ghost doesn't look high powered at all. You know. So for me, I just want to keep. 
Once again, 18 seconds off the clock. Stiff arm into the end zone. Could have took another minute off the clock, really. Uh, at the same time, he might have been clocking himself. But I think, man, if you're a runner and you got the upper hand like this and you're going to get into the end zone, maybe take some more time off that clock. But at the same time, shout out to man Pyro with the sub. I appreciate you guys, man. You guys can sub to the Twitch channel, man. I'm going to be streaming. This is Tuesday night. We're going to stream all the way through until Wednesday night sub-only streams where I can break down anything you guys need help with. Uh, but we see ghosts here, man. But also, like I said, VY could have hurried up just in case he didn't get a touchdown there. Although I don't think there's any chance that you kick a field goal with Zach with Zeke blinking like that. I think you go ahead and keep trying to run. But if you did kick a field goal, it could have been six to three, and then Ghost could have went down the field and got a field goal to win. So let's see how it works out. We see Ghost down five now. Is he going to abandon the running game? Uh, Ghost, who's always been a passer, and we see him out in bunch tight end. Let's see what he goes to. What he does is he lights as he goes through a little tight flex. I believe that's what this is. Gets to the outside with Zeke. Cuts back to the middle. Punches Byron Jones in the face. Picks up a cool 13 yards. Like I said, I put tight off. Whatever this is. Tight off. Tight Y off. I don't know what playbook this is right here. Is this Oakland? You know. For me, I don't know. Um... But we see Ghost abandoning the I formation, you know, and, and going to more of a uh, traditional Ghost three wide receiver sets and maybe trying to get VY out of that 3-4 run defense and try to soften him up. As you see in VY coming out in the nickel normal when it's time for passing down. So for maybe Ghost likes running against the nickel normal more than he did against the 3-4. Zeke versus Zeke. This is what it's about. Who Zeke's Pokemon ability means more. And we get to second and seven. Does Ghost keep running? Yeah, Ghost keep going to keep pounding, going to keep trying to establish the run here. Really bagged right there. Good gap discipline. There was really nowhere for Zeke to go right there, and the D tackle wound up shedding. Number 52, the left guard for the Cowboys completely is a weakness, really. So for me, that's the guy. I, I, it's tough to watch him, him play. As we see Ghost going to this inside switch. He's going to do the Ghost thing where he flips it 100 times. Because Ghost is a loser. That's pretty much what he what he, uh, what he he does. But here we go. This is his patented. This is his money play right here. A post, a drag, or a flat route, and a slant. It is 1,000% so far been his easiest play to get yards when it's time to pass. Really good protection out of that. And we see Ghost getting into field, close to field goal range now. This is a money drive, man. Ghost has been in this position a lot. Pause. And for me, um, he's going to do what it takes. You know, he's got three timeouts. Needs a touchdown, though. So if I'm VY, I'm cool. You know, you haven't come close to a touchdown yet. And all I got to do is hold you out of the end zone, and I win my trip to the Madden Classic. You know, and these runs at this point in the game are going to take 20, 30 seconds off the clock. As you see, it's at 150 now. Let's see where he comes out, where the clock goes to. The clock is going to go to a 10-second runoff. You know, the clock is a big deal. And this is where we come down to VY definitely could have took some more. VY could have took. Another minute off the clock if he wanted to earlier when he had the ball last. So that would that would eliminate Ghost being able to really take the whole game with him as he's going to do now. Zeke busting another one. And we see Ghost finally uses a timeout. Just really careful. ZM with the sub, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Three months, three months straight for my man ZM. Oh, yeah, you're right. They both already going to the... This is for $1,000 pretty much the game here. As we see Ghost with another inside zone. This one, he's going to bust it to the end zone. Oh, he doesn't. That was probably the worst. You got to call timeout if you're VY. Yep. Now, you, now your VY is like, yeah, I definitely could have. Wish I would have saved some more time. But honestly, if he would have milked some more time off that clock, trust Ezekiel Elliott to get in the end zone, he would have been in a better position in his last drive, honestly. But the time, the time management always, if you do it one way, you should have did it the other way. If you do it that way, you should have did it this way. And honestly, if you're VY, him scoring wouldn't be the worst thing because all these runs are pretty much going to take, take your timeouts. Um, so if, if you already used two timeouts, you definitely want to do your best to hold him out of the end zone. 
that's a, a tough que- a tough task for uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Demarcus Lawrence really blowing up the hole there, making a tackle. So we get to a third and goal now. This is a tough situation for Ghost. Looks like he's coming out in tight offset, some type of tight formation. Is it the under no, it's just regular tight doubles. Let's see what Ghost does here, man. Does he have confidence in his pass game to risk a run right here? Now uh, we're looking like two high, two low balls, two corner out low balls. It's looking like A, he's got him. Boom, touchdown. Great draw up by Ghost. That's simple, simple Madden. Simple, simple, simple. Just two flat routes and two corner routes. The flat routes will take the zones away, and you can low ball those corner routes into the end zone, especially against cover four. Uh, the, the best defense against that is some type of vert hooks on the end zone. Did VY just use his last timeout? Is that what just happened, or is that Ghost? Oh, no, it was Ghost. VY was already all the way out of timeouts. Ghost used his last timeout. Um, oh, I, I, yeah, definitely go for two here. A fumble to the crib will lose you the game. A pick to the crib will lose you the game. So, it is a little scary putting on aggressive because it, obviously it's a freak play. But you got to remember, if the defense scores, it's two points here. So, definitely got to be a little bit careful. But you definitely want this two-point conversion as golly. What I talk about, the underhand, <laughs> the Undertaker choke slam. Hold on. <laughs> the Undertaker choke slam stiff arm from hell. But that's why I talked about DBs should not be able to tackle Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm perfectly fine with this animation. Just just absolutely tombstoning Azue. Azue just absolutely picking him up and carrying him five yards into the end zone. Most of the time when we see that animation, he's snow plowing people with that DB's body. But uh, now we're down three. VY, you have no timeouts. I have no problem with the animation. If I would have no problem with that. Really, I don't. It's a shitty like corner. That's playing why we see VY with another shitty kick return. Uh, if I'm VY, I'm throwing out Tavon Austin. I'm definitely taking him off my field. He has cost me probably a net of, of 40 yards this game. Cost me two points early in the game and just was shitty on every special team touch that he had. You know. Three yards in a cloud of dust, man. That's how we're going to play uh, house rules, boys. This is Regs. All right, Mike, come on, man. Cowboys versus Cowboys. We see what does VY have here? I mean, he's been running. The, yep, the New Orleans. As we see, Ghost just sort of three man rush. Nothing fancy on defense, and one of the reasons I hate blocking my tight end really, as VY gets sacked, I hate blocking my tight end because sometimes they leave that one on one with the Marcus Lawrence and the tight end. VY went for it all right there. Pretty much cost him any chance to get in this game. So he goes dropping back in the cover three cloud. Uh, VY pretty much tapping out with a flat pass over there to Jason Witten. Uh, is that Jarwin? Let's see goes use the last time out. Might go to three deep. He's definitely switching his best DBs uh, as the safeties. Going with a little cover, non cover three cloud look. Once mm-hmm. again, I mean, you just see Demarcus Lawrence just breaking the sack. That's pretty much going to end this game, man. It's really not fourth and ten. Might go corner route over here on the left. All right, his corner route is on the right, which is a mistake. Let's see what he does. Maybe get this double team over here on Demarcus Lawrence. Got to do something. This new double team feature we'll talk about will not allow this one on one with the best pass rushers as he throws one up incomplete. That'll end the game and Ghost will move on as the winner of the Road to the Classic. Man, as we see Zan and Boogs, and I'll ask you again who has more swag, Boogs or Zan? That's the question of the day. I'm voting Zan. I don't know where you guys are voting. Boogs just no swag. He looks sad to be there. Haircut. His wife cut his hair. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just it's just not. The swaggle meter is definitely Zan. Although I tell you, man, the more Boogs hangs out with Zan, the more Boogs starts to look like Zan, honestly. 
And that's, I mean, what are you going to do, chat? What are you going to do? That's just how it goes. But, Gloves play really good. Run defense, honestly. Uh, that was a pretty boring game to watch. I, I don't know how you guys like the Zeke versus Zeke matchups. I don't know how you guys uh, are enjoying Reg's gameplay right now. Um, let me know if you are or you're not. But for me, excuse me, for me, I like seeing people pass the ball. I like seeing people make the right, put the right play out there. I like seeing them uh, understand what the defense is doing and then adjust to that, and vice versa. That's pretty much a, uh, that's pretty much what I like. Bugs stutter count. It's not Bugs isn't like a stutter. It's like a, uh, 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 yeah. You see that a lot from uh, pro players. It's more like that chat. You know, but but we'll talk about the patch in a little bit. But the road to the classic obviously was really awesome. I don't are they done, chat? Are they doing another road to the classic? I'm not sure. I just pretty much followed my head and stuff like that on Twitter, and they will let you know when it's time to uh, when it's time to see another one or watch another one, man, because it's definitely worth watching. Um, okay, but now let's talk about the patch. If we see Ghost Clef dominated. I want. I, it's really not too much more to say about Clef's performance. If you guys watched it, there was nobody else on his field, really. But let's go ahead and we'll talk about this patch, man. And I haven't played. I heard the play calling screen is glitchy and stupid. And as we bring this up here, I feel you guys can help me for sure um, with the patch because you guys have played it a little bit. But we'll talk about it. Man. Now, offensive lineman is pretty much the highlights of this of this patch, you know. And I think honestly, in hindsight, in hindsight, uh, I think it's a great idea. You know, we talk about these these goddamn D linemen being juggernauts. Uh, now, all of a sudden, now we finally got offensive linemen get abilities, and I think that's awesome. I really do think, uh, I mean, the run block elite stuff is cool. That's kind of corny, really. I see, I, I already see Stevie J and VY Electrify and, and Fitz Magic having run block elites all over the field. Pass block elites, not bad. Now, for me, this is where I, I don't know how Lane Johnson doesn't have this. Um, Brandon Brooks is a dog, and for me, I this is my biggest thing is where is Lane Johnson in these zone block holds, blocks uh, zone run plays. Zach Martin is going to be a dog, but these guys were already pretty good. You know, let me talk about some of the best offensive linemen in the game. Uh, power blocker, it's one person on gap block plays. I don't know what that is, uh, like a 0 1 trap. I don't know, I don't know, but Jason Kelsey has that. So if they made Lane Johnson. Honestly, if Lane Johnson got any love, you know, threat detected. The text indicated extra blitzes on third and fourth down plays. So much it'll show you it'll show you play art on defense. Yeah, I think that's that's terrible. All day increases wait time between pass rush move attempt by the defender when engaged on passing plays. So Tyron Smith now, from what I learned in this nasty streak, frequently impact blocks smaller defenders when blocking in space. Quentin Nelson. Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey. Uh, that's pretty cool. I guess that means they'll throw little people on the ground. I mean, as they should, as they do in real life. Joke, what's up, man? Joke, I heard you whining in the chat. Oh, Ghost is running my run defense. Ghost is running my run defense. Oh, my gosh. I saw that running on an ebook. Oh, my gosh. That's how, that's how Joke was in the chat. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Nah, man. See, now you know how I felt when, when Drenny was popping everybody with my fucking Saints offense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now you know what it's like. See? I'm gonna see, when people out there seeing your shit and you put your shit out there for the world, people gonna run it. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. But anyway. So we talk about these linemen. No, but you got to understand, man, when you put your stuff out there for everybody to see, people won't run it, especially if it's good. 
superstar. All right, so we we'll go back to Puller Elite. This is just at this is one thousand percent. This is gonna be Stevie J's guards right here, the Castro and Quentin Nelson. You know what I'm saying secure protector. Armstead, Rodney Hudson, Woodworth. This, I mean, I, my biggest gripe with this, Lane Johnson really got killed. Like, he really did. I feel like if Lane Johnson was, was Tyron Smith, which he's better than Tyron Smith, which he's the best offensive tackle in the NFL, right or left, give me Lane Johnson, period. If he was if he was like this and had the superstar abilities, I think it would honestly make the Eagles studs. Studs. I would make them, I, like, they're already a pretty solid team, but if their offensive line played this much great, like edge protector... Come on, bro. You're not giving me Mitchell Schwartz. Get he get this shit, but goddamn Lane Johnson doesn't get it. That's what I'm saying. But Lane Johnson, but Joe, this is the thing. Lane Johnson is their best offensive lineman, and he doesn't have like the edge shit or anything. So for me, that's why that's why I'm a little disappointed. But it's awesome having offensive linemen be able to get these abilities because I mean the the defensive linemen were just dominant in um. Defensive linemen were really dominant in the uh, in the early going in the first month of this game, and this kind of combats that a little bit. It makes I don't know which team it makes you use makes a, obviously the Cowboys just got richer, but for me uh, I don't know what team you could say the Eagles the Eagles probably outside of the Cowboys getting better I would say that the Eagles probably got the biggest boost on this offensive line thing, and Chad you guys can agree with me. Uh, the why did why did the 49ers get better? Who did they get? Joe Staley? I'm just thinking specifically just from a, just from an offensive line perspective. I feel like the Eagles definitely get the best uh got the obviously the Cowboys, they made Tyron Smith the Tyron Smith has every ability. Tyron Smith has okay, I'll put you on that guy and then we'll dominate. But as a good defensive coordinator, man, you have to take your Von Millers, your Khalil Max, and put them on the right side so he's not on the left tackle, you know. But this is cool. Now we'll talk about the double team feature, man. Uh, Niner, listen. Uh, for me, yeah, it's just it's going to be dumb. What's crazy about that though, in real life, Joe, we talked and Joe was talking in the chat YouTube that if you have say I have uh Von Miller, right? And you're playing offline, you can see what somebody subs. So say I go to my position subs and I sub Von Miller over to the to the right side. Now you can just move Tyron Smith to the right side. Okay, now the defensive players see you doing that, they can move him back. But at the end of the day, the offensive player is on the clock, not the defensive player. However, in real life, we can get to the line of scrimmage and Von Miller can just say, oh, I'm going to the other side. And it's not like the offensive line can switch. You know, I guess they could technically, but, you know, Von Miller can go wherever the hell he wants. There's no limit on that, you know, and for to not be able to do that in the, uh, maybe if you put like Von Miller, maybe you put Von Miller middle linebacker. Chat, now come with me here as a defensive core. I want you guys to just listen. We put Von Miller middle linebacker. We blitz him. And just move him to whatever the hell side Tyron Smith isn't. You know, I, it's a reason why I'm a Madden champion. Just come up with these thoughts in my mind. You know, put your best pass rusher in middle linebacker. Move him wherever the hell you want. Boom. Right there. That's that's how you do it. That's how you get it done. But <clears throat> let's talk about this double team thing. Um, I think it's awesome. Uh, I think it sucks the way I play defense. I <laughs> I pretty much rush three, and uh, if I if I rush three. Um, where is it at right here? The double team stuff. Uh, maybe I maybe I didn't get to it yet. Global updates. Oh, here it goes. Double team. Um, I I think this is a great idea, but I think this is something that happens that can happen in real life, man. And as a defensor, defensive coordinator. That's what I thought. I thought joke that, and I watched a couple people play in the last couple hours. I felt like if you're going to double team, say if I run dollar, and I thought this would make, I think this would make every defense better. If you're running nickel normal and you're just rushing four or three, 
and they're doubling J.J. Watt, let's say. Now all of a sudden you blitz the DB. Who the hell is going to pick up the DB? I feel like if you double J.J. Watt, those two guys are on J.J. Watt no matter what. That's how it should be. That's what you made their responsibility. Don't let the computer <clears throat> then help little Johnny from being a dumbass and getting outsmarted. Essentially, that's what it is. I want... If I'm running nickel normal, and I, honestly, of all the defenses I thought could even make this better, would be nickel normal. Because if I double team that end, maybe my tackle and my guard go, they can't pick up the blitz and DB no more. Now my DB is coming right through the backfield. You know? That's just how I feel would make it really tough. Um, yeah, this is tough. I, I, I'm going to see, and I'm going to play 24 hours of fucking Madden tonight, boys. So we're going to try all this stuff because I got to see. Because I have been rushing three people. I No, honestly, in the last three weeks of Madden, I've either blitzed eight people or only rushed three people. There is no in-between on this stream. There's no in-between in my mind. There's no in-between anywhere. For me, we are blitzing eight or we are dropping eight. One or the other. Eight, the number is eight, and it's, it's, it's either going back in coverage or it's coming after the quarterback. One or the other. There's no in-between for me, and I will see if this new double-team feature can open up some things. I think I'm a pretty creative person. I just told you guys the glitch to put Von Miller at middle linebacker and pick the, pick the weakest offensive lineman and just move him around. That's probably the biggest glitch I've ever... I, that's probably the smartest thing I've ever done, you know? And I told you guys that for free. And the crazy part is, some of you guys aren't subbed, you know? And some of you guys aren't hitting this like button on YouTube. That's what's crazy, you know? But we shall see how it works, man. But that's that's the biggest thing. I think this double team thing is going to be pretty cool because especially on regs. Now, these nerds, myself included, dub dot w, <clears throat> for me, I have three superstar D linemen. Actually, I have two superstar D linemen. One thing this will help out for Mutt, maybe you could only need to rock one secure pass blocker and double team the other side because we've seen a lot of people running this cover one on a dollar. I run a 3-4 cloud out of dollar. Uh, even, you know, the mutt bum cover three defense. Spy a D lineman, rush, rush three. Okay, maybe you can get away with one secure pass blocker, double team the other side. <clears throat> we'll see if that's going to work out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. For me, I'm not rocking secure pass blockers because my nuts are big, I can make a read, and I can make a play with the quarterback. You know, I don't need four hours to make a read. You know, that's not what we're doing out here. We have Steve Young. We have Deshaun Watson. I don't need secure pass. If you need secure pass blockers, then you need the Saints ebook that's live on Madden Turf. You know what I'm saying? You know, but that's just how I feel. Uh, we'll see how the patch goes. I heard the play call screen is just broken, uh, which is rough. <clears throat> Rough that the uh, play call screen is broken. Just annoying stuff. Players likeness. Uh, this is just making players look a little bit different. Let's see if anybody are on my mutt team. Who is on my mutt team? I heard Keenan Allen has his hoodie. Which is really cool. If he has his hoodie sticking out. None, I have none of these players on my mutt team. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what goes on over there. Miz, my guy. 20 months, man. I appreciate you. I really don't know what... I don't know what the hell they be doing over there. This is just franchise shit. Which I am in the CFM, man. If you haven't watched my first two draft picks on YouTube, go back and check those out. Those CFM picks. I got Julio Jones and I got Danielle Hunter. Which is crazy because I got an older player, but I feel like Julio is still going to be one of the best wide receivers in the game for five years. And I got a young stud, 24-year-old, 88-speed DN. I'm saying. <clears throat> oh, double me. See, and look, double me got better. Double me. That's just part of the reason why I got Julio Jones. Savage with the sub, man. I appreciate you using that Twitch Prime. You too can use that Twitch Prime, man. Twitch.tv slash dub dot. Use that Twitch Prime. Get it popping. You will be eligible to watch the sub only streams on Wednesday. We will talk about whatever the hell I find in this next 24 hours of playing Madden. Uh, this is part of the reason I got Julio Jones. Double me is probably <laughs> one of the one of the best X factors in the game. Outside of the arm bar and escape artist, man, double me is pretty much awesome, man. 
you know presentation updates I don't care about that <clears throat> the double team mechanic I think I think the double team mechanics gonna hurt a lot of people that play defense. Uh, have been playing defense early in the year. Oh, bugs fix it. I I see. I don't. You know, I feel like they patched me a little bit. You know why, chat? Everything I see is just about hurdles. Now I will tell you this, chat. I'm the only person I've ever seen that actually hurdles. You know, and for me that hurt that. Hurt. And th all right, let's get into another. We talk about the dev, the fumbles. Fumbles were cool, as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, if if my if my quarterback it goes zero to sixty, my running back choke slams people. I have all these secure pass blockers. Every once in a while, man, you just gotta fumble the ball. It's gotta be some risk for this shit. There's gotta be some downside to being fucking superheroes on offense. You know. So for me, I really feel like. Uh, you got to fumble a little bit. Now, the hurdle, for me, I am the only person that hurdles. And I feel like all these animation things were about hurdle. Look, fix an issue to make it difficult to tackle ball carrier during a standing hurdle. That's one thing. I do the standing hurdle. I'm the only person that does the hop. The only person you guys have ever watched that does the hop. I do the hop. I'm saying... Fixed an issue causing the first tackle to be missed versus a precision hurdle. I precision hurdle. Who the hell has? You guys don't even know how to precision hurdle. But I precision hurdle. So for me, two hurdle patches hurts my offense. It hurts my highlights. It hurts the reason why you watch, honestly. And I think they specifically made these fixes to make me not have fun. Swear to goodness. You know. So for me, I, 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 I'm hurt about that. You know, I like fun. I like hurdling. I like jumping over people. I like putting my nuts over people's heads. I feel like that's fun. You know, I like to have fun. That's what I like to do. I don't. No matter what it is, it's a video game I'm playing. I like to have fun. It's all about business. Yeah, Wesley, they don't want me to play, bro. I'm telling you, I just want to come out here and have fun. Drink some white claws. Turn up with the chat. Make some highlights. You know what I'm saying, it's you sweaties that want to go out here and run I form stretch every play. Like, god damn, get a girlfriend, dude. Like, seriously. Look, this is another one. Fixed an issue preventing the quarterback from fumbling during hit sticks. Like, what? Why do y'all always want the quarterback to fumble? That's what's crazy to me. Like, everybody, like, my quarterback already fumbles too much. You know? But, honestly, I, I, I want to see how this offensive line does. I feel like the offensive line... Uh, what's crazy about Madden, and, and I we've bitched about this for the longest time, is that the offensive line didn't really matter. It really didn't. In Madden 17, when I won, every single person other than Skimbo's loser ass had 10 cap linemen. You know, uh, and line hasn't mattered that much. And I feel like this year they're doing their best to make the offensive line matter. And I think that that's a good thing. You know, I don't think there's nothing bad with having the offensive line matter, having you have to spend your money on offensive line, having you have to spend your cap on offensive line, having you have to pick a team in regs, kind of based on how good the offensive line is. Because as much as uh, you think it's not a big deal, in the NFL, man, the offensive line matters. Uh, for me, in, in football, it's about the quarterback, and it's about the offensive and defensive line. The rest of that shit... Bro, the, the Antonio Browns of the world, the Ezekiel Elliott's of the world, the Julio Jones of the world, the, all them guys, that shit doesn't matter in real life. It doesn't. It's about the quarterback, the the line play, and the coach. That's about that's what football's about. Period. Yeah, so for me, uh for them to go in the right step to make the offensive and defensive line matter that much more, I think it's a good thing. You know, um, Nah, Free Mafia, Skimbo, Snake. That's why I have this emote right here, bro. Free Mafia, you if you sub, you can have this emote too. It's called the Snake Bow emote right here. Now, the rest of the chat can put the Snake Bows in there if they're with me. That's why we have that. It's Skimbo's face on a snake. I'm saying that's because he snaked me one time. We were great friends. We were on a, a 2K Pro-Am team. And what happened was, I'm saying, he kicked me off and picked up a bunch of bums. You know what I'm saying? He picked up a bunch of bums. So for me, that was rough. You know what I'm saying, 
So that I mean, but that's we'll see how the offensive line plays. I'm about to play the shit out of Madden, House Rules, Mutt, Regs, whatever y'all want to see. You guys can tell me what you want to see from me, honestly, playing the game. And YouTube, hit the comments, man. What do you guys like watching the most? Uh, so for me, uh, that's what I want to do. But this was the needed podcast. This was at Boogs. They did not have a pink pocket tee. I just want a regular v neck. I got some regular v necks. There was no pink pocket tee at Walmart today. I was very disappointed. Boogs, you, some of the chat actually see. Now I didn't. I didn't make any Boogs jokes all day. Then he creep into the chat, and it's just like, yo, when Boogs creep in the chat, it's just like time to unload all the Boogs jokes. Honestly, you know what I'm saying now, Boogs. Let me tell you something about. Let me tell you something about human beings, right? One, Boogs actually got some votes that he had more swag than Zan on the Roads of Classic podcast or the Roads of Classic broadcast this weekend. He got some votes. Boogs comes to me and says, I we I hop in the chat today. I said, what's up, y'all? Boogs is like, yo, you see my new gamer tag? That shit is hot. First of all, let me tell you something, fellas. Mm-hmm. If you got something that's cool, or you got something that's popping, or you're the man, or your shit is is that fly, you don't have to tell anybody it's that fly. They just gonna tell you it's fly. Like, damn man, I like your jacket, that's fly. I like your car, that looks fly. I'm saying I like your shoes, they are nice, they are new. When you have to come to your friends and say, the shit I got is cool, that shit is lame. That If you gotta tell people that your shit is cool, that shit is whack. Number one rule of life. Don't tell, don't be the person that toots his own horn because then your horn won't work. And ain't nobody else trying to toot no horn. Because honestly, when somebody comes to me, chat, when somebody in my life comes to me, right, and tells me their shit is hot, the first thing I want to do is tell them, no, shut the hell up. That shit is whack. Even if it is hot, if you got to promote this shit first, I want to tell you this shit is whack. That's my goal now. Now, by you telling me shit is hot, it is now my goal to tell you that shit is whack. That's how humans work. Period. That is how humans work. If you come and say, oh man, my girl is bad as shit. Wait till you see my girl. First thing I'm going to say is that bitch is corny. Right? Period. That's just how it works. That's how humans work. Period. The first, my man ain't say hello. He ain't say what's up. He ain't say do you like the patch. He said, my new gamer tag is hot. And time out, who the fuck says my new gamer tag is hot? Who says that type of shit? My new gamer tag is hot. Bugatti Bugs. Bro, you have a Honda. What? If y'all don't get the hell out of here, Bugatti Bugs. Yo, keep this shit, bro. I'm I'm done. I'm done. Bugatti Bugs. Get the, Yo. <laughs> But I'm gonna stop killing books. Books on the next podcast, man. He gotta get some jokes off too, man. Books got a, it's it's a, it, no, it's a fly. It's Honda, not bullshit. It's not a bull because you know it's bullshit Hondas out there. But his 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 Honda not a bullshit Honda though. That's right. It's not a bullshit Honda. It's not a he don't got a bullshit car. I'll tell you that right now. But it's not a Bugatti. If his if his gamer tag was Honda Books, he'd be the man. You know what I'm saying? Honda Bugs is a hot ass gamer tag. Now, if he came and said to me, I have the Honda Bugs, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, yo, that's a hot gamer tag. Honda Bugs. Honda Bugs will be a creep on the leaderboards. Let it be known right now. <laughs> he changing it back. <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with Bugs? No, no, his no, his Honda not, I mean, it's not bad, but. Oh Lord Jesus, behind the, <laughs> behind the Toyota Bugs. <laughs> Yo, Jesus, bluff the God. <laughs> Yo, somebody better make the name Honda Bugs, bro. <laughs> Honda Bugs is kind of hell. Nah, Boogs' car is not terrible because the one time he went to North Carolina, he drove that joint all the way to North Carolina. 2K Pro-Am team. Wesley, what the fuck are you doing? That's my question. Because I'm here, baby. 
Cause I'm, cause Wesley, this is what I tell you. I got tired of these kids. I'm tired of these 2K radiant kids. I'm tired of these freaking these boo painter kids that think they're so goddamn good at 2K. And I know if we put a little bit of effort, we will wipe the floor with every goddamn 2K player. Period. Whoever EMB embarrassing is, they they just need to stop playing Madden. Whoever that is, this is where I talk about creep names, bro. There's like four people in the world that deserve a creep name. Really, that's it. The rest of you guys suck. Just play under your real name. Nobody's going to steal what the fuck Truzy is doing. Nobody's going to steal what the hell Salty is doing. Nobody gives a fuck about you. Period. Just play under your real name. Nobody cares. Seriously. It's not funny. It's not cool. Play under your real name. Nobody gives a shit. I hate that. Like, for real, that's just hella. That's just so corny to me. I've been over creep names enough. I said, if you're Kiv, Kiv, Ghost, maybe Joke, and, and Skimbo, people that, people that you know, will steal shit from. I've never played somebody this year that I said, oh, I'm going to steal some shit from. But anyway, Truzy's my guy. Truzy gets a lot. Truzy gets a lot of flack. I, and, and, I, and I subbed to Truzy last night because he's streaming with a face cam. I, one of my topics on the podcast today, and I'm going to make it a topic anyway. It's going to be what you what you 16 to 16 to 22 year olds should do with your goddamn hair. Because I'm a man that doesn't have those options anymore. You know, when you get my age and you get old, you don't have hair options anymore. You pretty much just got to rock the baldy. But I see these kids with all this damn hair and it's just there. Like, what the hell are you doing? You have endless possibilities. Like what the and it just it's just there. Like there's just no like they just don't give a shit about it. I mean the Heisenberg is it. Yes, and I this is like and I don't even know where to look for hairstyles. But it's like you don't see no my man Killian. Now you don't see anybody out here. Like there's no movie stars with their hair is just there. They just let the shit grow, then they cut it. Like, they really look like they're six years old. I have to rock the body. This is my only choice. I mean, it's it's very fly. And I will tell you, it's probably the flyest hairstyle in the community. I mean, Kim's shit is gay. It's kind of fly, but it's borderline gay. So that's why it's questionable. So I got to take the body over the Kim's shit. I have to, you know? That's, that's just how I feel. Now, I will tell you, a lot of you kids have flies. Or a lot of you kids have hair is my question. Let's see. Let, we're gonna go to. We're just gonna go. This is easy, chat. Now you guys have the internet because you're playing Madden. You have the internet. This is all we have to go to. You go to this internet thing here. It's called Google. Let's do this. Hairstyles. Hairstyles for men, not little boys. Hairstyles for men. Okay, it's popping. Now let's go to images. What's wrong with all these haircuts? What's wrong with the fade and just the hair up top? You can have any one of these damn haircuts. Anyone. But they just have eight-year-old boy haircuts. You know what I'm saying? You can have the little, you can have this joint with the part and the comb and you know put a little gel in it and a little fade. You can, you have endless possibilities. Truzy could get this joint. I mean, it's a little wild for Truzy, but he could get this shit. Put a part in your shit. I mean, it takes some time to look decent. I mean, do you want women to look at you or do you want them to laugh at you is the real question. Basic haircuts. Put a little time and effort into this shit, you know? But instead, I'm dealing with seven, eight-year-olds. Eight-year-old boy. This is fuck. What the f This is the haircut that they all have. This shit right here. This is it. This is the fucking haircut. This is it. This is every man player right here. What? Just type eight-year-old boy. This is it. What? I'm done. Look at this. This is the J Wall and the Truzy. They just hair. Like, look at this shit. Eight-year-old boy. It literally pops up with just hair. Like, what? Like, bro, get a part cut in your shit. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Eight-year-old boy. That ass first picture. Is the Truzy J Wall haircut? Yo, that is crazy, chat. I'm done. This is the Needed Podcast. This is what we do here, man. Oh my God, chat. 
the first thing, eight-year-old boy, that's the haircut that pops up. Because that is the first... Bro, that is the first picture that pops up. That's the first... That's crazy that that is literally the first picture. No, Crush got out of the corny haircut. Crush got out of that. Because he at least cut his shit. He cool. He had just a low cut. No fade. It didn't look like he did too much. It looked like... It didn't, but it didn't look like it was ignored. You understand when I say that? It didn't look like he did too much, but it wasn't ignored. So Crush is, Crush is out of the getting flame zone. Like, he, he, he improved from the wall... And from that wild haircut from when he won Bengals. So he improved. Like he 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 out of the I can't even flame crush no more. He 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 out of it. But but J Wall and, and Truzy, and I know a lot of you guys, man. Yeah, crushing crush in like the you know what I'm saying? Crush is in the nice he's in the the half he uh, you, he don't even have no jokes for crush no more. You know what I'm saying? See, and me having no hair, that lets me I'm gonna tell you guys. Now I never wanted to do the comb over, but when I had the, cause my whole life I just had a buzz cut, like like an asshole. Cause now I'm, cause I'm letting you guys know where I messed up, where I messed up in life. Cause let's go back to this, let's go back to this right here. Let's go back to the J Wall. This is J Wall right there, literally the same fucking person. Type eight year old boy in Google. Let's go to men's haircuts, hairstyles for men. Here we go. I will tell you this. This is why it makes me mad, Chad. That you guys and you guys don't listen to me. That hoes love this shit. Like, hoes will drop their draws on sight for some nice hair. And I didn't know this shit because I had, a, like, a low cut my whole life, just a buzz cut. So I was, like, 22, right? 22, 23. And my sister said, my sister who cuts hair said, you know what? You're losing your hair. You better get one of these hairstyles soon, right? Now, I could never do none of these joints. I mean, I had, like, something like this for a little bit, but then it started getting real light. While you had the opportunity, you little dusty ass young bulls, while y'all still have hair and you can still pop and you can still get hoes from just your hair. I know you guys have no game. I know you guys are, are lame as shit. You might as well look good. That's all I'm asking you guys. You know? Jay Wall, you should definitely, I mean, you should like just get some shit, get a little fade and get some, you know? That's all I'm saying. That's all you need. The hoes love it. And you can ask Kim. Like I said, for me personally, I mean, I'm a little bit, it's a little bit gippish for me. But honestly, I, I really think if you have the opportunity to have hair, man, you better have hair, not just some shit sitting up here. Like, that's not it. Because when y'all get 30 and you're looking like me and you got to play Madden and you got to shave your head every damn day, you're going to be like, damn, I should have had a David Beckham when I was eight years old or when I was 16. Dude's going to college with the eight-year-old haircut. Like, it's crazy. Y'all going to college. When you're going to college with the eight-year-old haircut, it's crazy. Wesley, yeah. Wesley, and you ain't know about it either. Wesley, yeah, ass didn't know about it. Matt in 17, Wesley didn't know. He was just... Matt in 17, was, Wesley was just J-Wall, but from the farm. That's just a farm J-Wall. That's all Wesley was. And man, then Kiv came along. Kiv, but this is where Kiv lets you down because he didn't tell you how. He just, you just wanted to be like Kiv. Y'all never really had the, the the hair conversation that we're having right now. You know, you just said, my friend Kiv looks like this. I want to try to get a haircut like that. You know, he never told you, get the palm made, push it to the left, then push it to the right, then down one swipe. He never told you that. You know, and that's where he let you down. You know what I'm saying? The farm, the farm J-Wall is hell. The palm made, you got to put a little here, a little there, and put it down. You know what I'm saying? He never told you the end, and that's where he let you down. That's why you out there with just a big ass swoop, like like Wesley has a swoop from here down to here and shit. And this is, and, and the more I talk about you, the more I respect Crush, cause he keep his shit basic now. You know what I'm saying? The more the more I start realizing, Crush really is he he really is somebody to admire. You know what I'm saying? He keep his shit basic. Whereas Wesley wanted to try to be like Kiv, he tried to get the Kiv. Crush said, you know what? I'm Crush. I ain't got time for that shit. I'm I'm about this I'm about this bunch of action. You know what I'm saying? He just he just go there and just chill. You know what I'm saying? That's all. But I just I'm serious when I tell you guys 
Oh, Crush's, Crush's real name is Clarence Winchester? Hold on, wait. Shout out to Golden Rush YouTube with the sub, man. Dang, you put some pennies in the chat, man. Crush name is Clarence? Don't tell me Crush name is Clarence, bro. Crush, your name is Clarence? Is that where Crush came from? Winchester? Winchester kind of hell, though. No, Winchester is kind of hell, chat. No, let's, let's be honest. Clarence is not tough, but Mr. Winchester, that's hell. Mr. Winchester is hell. <laughs> Mr. Winchester. That's another creep name. Yo, whenever the hell we finally get a leaderboard that's worth playing ever, Mr. Winchester. Hell creep name. Mr. Winchester is hell. Oh, Google Clarence Winchester? All right. Oh, uh, this is what we do with the Needle Podcast. I don't know. It's not even about man no more. I just... Uh, I don't even know how to spell Clarence. Clarence Winchester. Oh, y'all can't even see my typing. Huh? Uh, I thought this was Bugs Uncle. They like Bugs a little bit. Bugs with a goatee. It's definitely Bugs swag right there. Bugatti Bugs. Okay. And I don't know what I mean. This Clarence Winchester section really not popping. It's a black uh, criminal. It's a black uh, Bugs. It's a white guy. Clarence Winchester. I don't think this is Crush's name. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. It is a white criminal. Okay. Winchester. This is a bullshit Google right here. All right. You guys bluffed me. This, <laughs> this bug's right here. This bug's after he eat plants for 150 years and nobody knows is still alive, but he alive. Not knowing shit, not knowing, not knowing technology, not knowing anything. He just ate plants for 150 years, so he's still alive. What a great time to be alive, boys. Jesus Christ. On the bugs. Bugs and Rodwin. Yo. Bugs gonna eat plants for 150 years. Talk about, I'm healthy. I have no friends left. Once you turn 60, he gonna have no friends left. Like, none. That's it. Because all of us are eating bullshit, playing Madden. He eating greens. Going to dance recitals and shit. All right. But we up over an hour and ten minutes, man. Book here's, <laughs> Book's here for a long time, not a good time. Yo, a long time, not a good time. That's a bullshit. Listen, man. Picture me ever living like that, man. Picture that with ten Kodaks. But, man, I, I, I went to sleep. I said, man, if this tweet, let me show you guys, man, we're going to play man on that. I said, this tweet, get 100 likes, we're going 24 hours. Are we going, and that, but the thing is, we've been live for an hour. Do we have 23 hours left? But the, I, I can only do this if y'all with me. That's what I'm going to tell you guys right now. I want you guys to be with me. This was the Needed Podcast, episode 43. We talked about the patch. We talked about Ghost and VY running Ezekiel Elliott up and down the field. And we talked about hairstyles, man. And I'll tell you, get some decent hairstyles while y'all can. Because I wish, I wish I could go back to the days where I could have some popping hairstyles. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could. But I can't. I don't have that option no more. You know, I, I my, my shit's a little thin back here and in the front right here. So I cut it off, you know. And, and that's another thing. As we go to hairstyle, man, if your shit is a little thin, cut the shit off, man. Like for real, man. Like, I don't. Th I couldn't have survived. Like, when after Jacksonville, they cut the whole side of my hair off, and that was like, all right, I'm gonna just cut it off. But I, I couldn't have survived any longer. I was all right. Once the wind blew, it was over. So you know what I'm saying, I was on talk about hygiene. They tell me to wash my hands every time I piss, so I can't be the hot man talking about hygiene. I'm doing anything y'all want to watch. But anyway, this was the Needed Podcast episode 42. Appreciate you guys coming through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, probably be lazy with his hair. Like he he'd be lazy. Like he let it he let it grow back in. I could never do that. 
But probably different. He got a whole son. He got a wife. Like, he's super settled down. Like, he don't care. I mean, I have a girl, but at the end of the day, man, if Beyonce, if I bump into Beyonce one day, listen, I'm taking that down.